beginning in de December, probably about the middle of December. No, it wasn't that late. But anyhow, David's mother and I were sparking in the back seat of George and Imogene's car. And, uh, that, that's all part of the story. <laughs> We were riding with George and I and they were in the front seat. David's mother and I were in the back seat, making out, I think. We didn't even know what the word meant then. We still don't know that. But uh, the radio broke with an announcement that the Japanese had attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor. That's where the military part came in. Uh, George, he, re he enlisted in the Navy the following day. Well, I was still in high school, in my senior year, and uh, I couldn't volunteer. But I did finish school, and that meant finishing school, high school, and being of 18 years old or older, uh, you were required to re register for the draft. I registered for the draft in uh, December of 41. I was notified that, uh, no, 90, uh, 40, 42. I was notified that I was called, along with 31 other fellows from Randolph County, Indiana, and sent off to, we took our oath of off of us uh, in uh, Winchester, boarded the train, and uh, went to Fort uh, Benjamin Harrison in Indianapolis, then to Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia where we served, start serving our basic training. Then uh, about six weeks of there, then we were transferred again to Camp Sutton, North Carolina, where we learned how to shoot down airplanes. They gave us great big machine guns and we bang, 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 bang. That was the first uh, kind of any instruments we were using. Then we went to Camp Stewart, Georgia, which is Fort Stewart, Georgia. Now, and they gave us rifles and rifle ranges and all that fancy stuff so that uh, we would know, know what to do when we got in. Uh, things got tough. Well, the sergeants worked on us and worked on us and worked on us until the time to go overseas. We went to uh, uh, England, where we started taking assault training, learn how to hit the beaches, because we were going to go to Europe. We went to uh, about uh, eight or nine weeks training there, finished our uh, basic training. Then we were assigned our buddies. In that, in that year, uh, we had a buddy system. 
Only they weren't buddies. This is your big brother. This is your big brother. Me and my other big brother, we served together through the invasion of France and met General Patton there. Uh, he was a tough old bird, but he was a good leader. Uh, General Patton uh, led us across the country of France in 90 days. And, uh, the time we left, we hit Normandy Beach until we hit the Rhine River at the other side of France. We just had one trial after another. Uh, the wife is here. And she wanted me to remind me to, uh, to tell you about the story of what the English done for us just the evening before uh, we were to uh, board the ships to go to France. They threw the big party, and then at this party, a young lady stood in the middle of that group of rough and tough soldiers just ready to give their lives and uh, saying, what did I tell you that one there? Ave Maria. Ave Maria. The most beautiful prayer in the world. There's my first change of life right there. Because it hit me right when I needed it the worst. I was scared. I was just like all the other soldiers. Didn't know what we were getting into. But, uh, we were assigned our big brothers, and uh, a big brother was to keep awake and watch over me and protect me, just like I was. Uh, he was my big brother, and uh, I was to do the same for him. I was to watch out for him. Well, then comes the part where it's time to start shooting and protecting yourself and protecting your buddy. And I was a good shot. I, I was an Indiana farm boy and lived around here so, and almost born with an, uh, a gun in my hand. Uh, we had rifles, uh, four ten shotguns. We knew what we were doing when it came down to shooting. And, uh, Time to take that first shot at that green uniform, that German soldier, another human being. I don't think I ever pulled that trigger on that first shot because uh, I just was wasn't ready to take another man's life. And uh, when the time came that I was ready. It was not to save my life or my buddy's life, but those others around me that were getting picked off or shot. And I got tired of seeing that happen, so I done my duty. I was trained to shoot to kill. Uh, I wasn't, wasn't sure I was ready, but uh, I didn't pull the trigger then. Glad to be able to be here to tell you about it. So it was the toughest thing I ever done. I never, never get over it. I still have nightmares about that. We were, went on from uh, France and uh, Belgium. That's where I learned to ski. I never had skied all in my life. I knew what skis were, but. Uh, they issued the skis and showed us how to use them and uh, when we went in some ski troops there in the winter of 44 and uh, in, the, in the Germany we got to the uh, finish of the war and the Germans were 
to begin to get really whipped. And uh, when that happened, uh, uh, I asked the uh, sergeant, uh, mess sergeant, if we couldn't have a little bit of fresh meat when we were living out of the cave around the cave, in little cave boxes, just big enough to fit in their pocket, but uh, that's what they call them, they just our cave rations. If he wouldn't, uh, I'd bring a deer in if he'd, we could have a little fresh meat. He said, sure. If, in fact, I'll go with you. Well, he didn't go with me, I went with myself. And uh, never did see that deer, but uh, uh, that's where I took my first prisoners of war. A German, young German officer and his aide came out from behind the bush. And he knew I was there a long time before he was there. And I thought it was in his heart and he didn't take me out right then. But he didn't do it. And I, I'm partly prepared to answer a question or two if something's on your mind. Uh, it might think, make things easier for me. What did I miss, dear? You, you told me something else you wanted to know. Anthony? I want you to talk about the liberation of the. Uh, the uh, Lukenball, yes. The, oh, the, the death camps. camps. The death camps. Uh, the first death camp we come across was Lukenball. The Lukenball death camp, the ovens were still hot. 